What's up, YouTube? Uh, Going to do another how-to lanyard uh, for you today. This one's an easy knot called the half hitch that looks really cool in my opinion, and it's super, super easy for you beginners out there and for anybody advanced. You know, it's still very cool and functional. This is my uh, Antonini Nada knife. It's uh, my go-to paracord knife because of the locking uh, marlin spike. I use that to tighten my uh, monkey's fists and do a lot of other stuff. I've got a full review on this knife if you want to check that out. But um, it has a really small lanyard hole. In reference to the paracord size, it won't fit in there too well. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can, you know, melt it and taper it down with your fingers. Or another easy way is to just take out a little bit of the guts. which we're not going to need at the end, this uh, this last piece of paracord here, we're not going to need. What I've got is about a 13, 14 inch long piece, and this side has already been melted, so I'm going to start here after pulling those guts out and pull it through my fingers so the uh, outside layer pulls nice and tight again. And I just felt them right there as the end, so I've got about, you know, two inches without any guts. And now I can easily just push, push that through the... Uh, the hole without even melting it. Yeah, I did say easily, didn't I? There it is. Now I will melt it. And being there's no guts, you don't have to do much there. Just melt it a little bit. And um, this lanyard again is a real simple one. And uh, I want to cut that end off at the last second, so I'm going to find that bit and then leave what I want my lanyard to be plus about an inch. So if I want a lanyard this long, uh, I'm going to leave just a touch more about right there. Just a touch more. And this, this, this all doesn't matter. That's just going to be how long your lanyard is at the end. You could even use the gutted part, but I can feel mine stops right there, so I'm leaving enough plus a little bit. This is the uh, half hitch, guys, and it's uh, just super simple. Now, you've got your shorter end here and a longer end. We're going to be working with the longer end going around the shorter end. So what you want to do is basically um, with the end that's longer being on the back side, you're going to come around the front of the shorter end making a hole then you're going to grab it so you can hold it and come through that same hole. That's the half hitch. I like to grab this uh, shorter end now with my fingers down here so that I can do the tightening a little easier. And then uh, just tighten that up. You want to keep the knife facing the same way to you the whole time or whatever you're doing or you can get turned around. But again, you come in front with the longer end and then back through the hole you just made grabbing the shorter end if you want with your pinky down there. Most of the difficulties with learning knotting and tying and paracord is just how to hold everything. You want to get each one of these nice and tight. Each one the same nice level of tightness as the one before. So the knife's still facing me. I'm going to take my long end, go over top, make a hole, and come back through it. I'm going to grab the bottom with my pinky and tighten it all up. Now, this is going to make a twist pattern. Uh, just two or three half hitches like that will hold just about anything you want when you're camping and tying stuff to your vehicle and doing whatever. And uh, it's a real nice strong knot. But when you continue to do them, and uh, just over the front with the long end and through, the, through its own hole again, when you continue to do them, they form a cool twist pattern that I think makes a great lanyard. And this is... Uh, desert camo um, paracord that does not match that blue knife obviously but this is for you guys just a demo so my long end it's not necessarily that much longer anymore it's about an inch longer but um, just keep the knife facing the same way the whole time again so you know which way you're gonna go which way you're going and you're gonna just going to keep doing those as long as you like. You can stop anytime you want or you can keep going. You can throw a bead on there at some point 
um, and then just keep doing the exact same knots. There's nothing different. You would slide a bead over this end and just keep on trucking. Eastbound and down, 18 wheels and rolling. And at this point, you can start to see what's going on there with the twist. Pretty cool. Um, if you do this one short, it just doesn't look right, so I like to keep twisting. And just make sure each one that you move on to is nice and tight, like the one before. Got turned around there. You can tell pretty easily, though. Talking on camera, not paying attention. All right. I could keep going and make that a little longer, but uh, I just wanted to show you guys this, so I'll go ahead and show you how I like to finish these. And when you're finishing this, when you cut your stuff off, I recommend just cutting one at a time so that you don't uh, tear everything up because these will pull out pretty easily. And my... Um, go-to close-in paracord cutter is the Victorinox scissors on the small keychain size Victorinox. But uh, I'm going to start with the side one, the one that's sticking out to the side, not the short end we started with. And if you pull a little slack, not slack, but if you pull it all taut, it'll cut much better. And those are super sharp. If you guys don't have those, they leave a nice clean cut. And uh, I like to leave about this much sticking out when I do my paracord work to give me a nice big bead to burn up. And I use the bottom of the blue flame. And I don't like to let the whole thing get on fire. It creates a little bit of a uh, burns around the side of it. But if you keep that blue flame on there, you can control it real well. Now, I don't know why people touch this stuff with their fingers. If you're using a Bic lighter, which is what I recommend, I mean, you can get right in there on it, smash it down. You get a nice, clean, flush surface. And these rough edges that you can see there, watch. Put the lighter to it one more time, and they just shrivel up and round off and get real nice and smooth. Now, um, you let that dry for a minute, blow on it a little, and then just double check it for comfort. Um, you can also make this into a bracelet, obviously, similar to the uh, Cobra Stitch bracelets. And then when you're burning your edges like that on anything, you can just do it the way I just showed you there. And this one is nice and round, no rough edges. If there was, maybe there's just like a hint, say, there of a rough edge. That blue corner flame again rounds it right off. So now you have this long end, and uh, I like to cut that right flush with the knot. But once you're, once you're cut off here, you need to be careful or the whole thing can start to pull off of itself. So just uh, make your cut a little off, like I said, or a little further away than you need to be so that you're in control. Nice, flush, clean scissor cuts. And these things somehow, I mean, they're always sharp with the Torinox. They're sharper than Leatherman. They're sharper than Gerber Multi-Tools. I've got all those things and I tend to always grab for those. And this one, you want a little larger of a, of a uh, flattening so that it won't be able to pull out later. So you get that blue flame good and hot and I can see it bubbling now, I don't know if you can, and then you can smash it with that metal lighter and just kind of rock it back and forth to round it off for you and it'll never come out. You'll have to cut that out. Now it's going to have some rough edges, blue flame, they round right off. Nice. So there you have it, kind of a cool twisting pattern, really easy lanyard uh, for anyone to do. And if you want to look it up again, it's called the half hitch, but it's a uh, very 
good for beginners, very good for anybody. I still use them quite a bit because they just look good. And um, for girls, bracelets that don't necessarily like the thickness of the cobra stitch, you can go with one of these and it, it's a little more feminine looking than uh, say the more masculine, thicker, stronger, bigger cobra stitch. But I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys liked it. If you have any questions, would like to see anything, please let me know. And uh, please sub everybody. Thanks for watching.